This is the Physical Activity Researcher Podcast, a podcast for researchers of sedentary behavior, physical activity, and sports. Join for a relaxed dialogue about research design, practicalities, and, well, anything related to research. Learn from your fellow researchers useful and relevant information that does not fit into formal content and limited space of scientific publications. And here is your host. Welcome, everyone. This is the Meaningful Sport Podcast, and I am your host, Nora Ronkainen. Meaningful Sport is a series of discussions on the why and how involvement in sport and physical activity can be an important part of a life worth living. We will also explore threats to meaningful engagement in sport and movement culture practices and ask questions about what we can learn about the human condition through our involvement in sport. The guests are leading scholars in human and social sciences of sport who share their explorations in a scholarly as well as a personal context. If you are interested in the theme, you might also want to check out MeaningfulSport.com. There you can find podcast show notes, read a blog, and access many resources for further explorations of Meaningful Sport. In today's episode, we will focus on exploring the what, how, and why of meaningful physical education. Our two excellent guests have spent several years on developing and implementing a framework, which is called Learning About Meaningful Physical Education, which encourages teachers to prioritize meaningful experiences in physical education. Today, we will hear more about the theoretical underpinnings and key principles of the framework, as well as find out more about the experiences of implementing the framework in practice. And before we start, I would like to introduce our guests. So Deirdre Nikroinen is a senior lecturer in physical education at Mary Immaculate College in Ireland. And Tim Fletcher is associate professor in physical education pedagogy at the Department of Kinesiology at Brock University in Canada. I would also encourage all the listeners to visit the website of the LAMPE project at meaningfulpe.wordpress.com where you will find out a lot more about the project and the other team members who are working in it. So I am really delighted and honored to have you here, Deirdre and Tim. Welcome, and thank you so much for finding the time for our chat today. Thank you for inviting us, Nora. Thanks, Nora. It's always good to start with a little bit like a stupid question. So why do we need meaningful physical education? And I think more specifically, why do we need your project on this. So can we maybe take it to indicate that uh, we might be having meaningless PE or less meaningful PE in our schools than what we would hope? That's that's a, actually a really good question <laughs> to start us off. In, in the physical education literature, there, there's a long standing trend of identifying problems with physical education, uh, how it's done um, and the experiences that the children have. And there seems to be a, a recurring trend in the literature that the current forms of physical education that dominate don't seem to accommodate all the participants um, equally, if I could use that word, mm-hmm. um, in that the forms of physical education that are prioritized seem to privilege children who are more skilled, children who are more inclined towards competitive uh, activities, and children who are more inclined towards physical contact team invasion type games. And the findings that we get now when we speak with children are very similar to the findings 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. And and physical education scholars like David Kirk and and others have talked about the idea that physical education is a little bit stuck, that despite advances in research, new insights and new understandings, we're not succeeding in, in pushing what's happening on the ground forward in response to that research. So... Where our research started 
was almost like a, a response, uh, trying to make sense of and synthesize the main things that we're finding in the in the physical education literature, and find a way to for those to become more consistently implemented in practice. So whether you're in a a school, you know that is would be considered a very sporty school or whether you're in a school where physical activity is less important or so regardless of the context that there's certain features or characteristics of experience that that are hit so that all the children get the same chance the same introduction the same preparation the same kind of experiences um where physical education has, you know, there's an opportunity for physical activity to be something important in their lives. Um, I don't know, do you want to add to that, Tim? I suppose just picking up on some of the ideas about why meaningful PE and perhaps does that mean we're, you know, in response to or in our response to some of the things that were going on, did that mean that children were having meaningless PE? I would think that Yes, some are having meaningless or were, are or were having meaningless physical education in, as Deirdre said, it didn't mean much to their lives. On the negative side of things, I would say that there are also some who are having meaningful experiences but in a very negative or harmful way. So they might have felt harassed or ostracised in class or um, that they weren't having enough opportunities for success or that... Um, the opportunities that they were having, um, they weren't able to extend to their lives outside of school. So on a very negative side of things, um, if we take it to an extreme, we want to eradicate those overly negative experiences that are negative in a meaningful way. I never want to try that again or that was an awful experience. I'm not looking forward to physical education tomorrow. Um, so that we can flip it so that most uh, are looking forward to physical education class tomorrow. You know, what sort of things might be, we be doing this week? Who do I get to play with? Or, you know, I do get to play with my friends or we get to try that really um, fun new thing that the teacher introduced us to last week or there's a new um, skate park that's opened up in our local community and we're having someone coming in to talk about that. Maybe that means I'll get to try those things once I'm finished school. Um, so I think that's sort of how we're pulling some things together. Um, there are some students who were having meaningful experiences and Deirdre outlined the types of characteristics of those students who were succeeding and were having meaningful experiences in a positive way. Um, but we really want to extend that to, to include all of those students who were having meaningless experiences or meaningful experiences in a negative way and make and flip that around a little bit. Yeah, I already heard something really interesting when you were saying that uh, you can have meaningful experience in a negative way. And I think quite often in a common sense way, it's thought that if something is meaningful, that would be something that, that holds like a positive balance to you. Which brings to my next question that the concept that you s- decided to focus on is meaningful experience in physical education. So... Where did you kind of draw inspiration for your concept and and how did you diagnose that it's more meaning that we need? Somebody else could say that we need more intrinsic motivation or we need more flow or we need more play or something like that. So how did you come to focus on the concept of meaning and meaningful experience? Um, Our our work when we started off was... um, largely influenced for by and she and actually his work shaped our our research and design and everything was the writings of Scott Kretschmer who's a philosopher of sport um, and he writes um, quite a lot and then his work leans a lot on the on the writings of Eleanor Metheny who would be have been in the USA in the 1960s um so that was our starting point um in terms of tying down the concept of meaningfulness um and how how we were going to use it um 
We've looked, I, I know that psychology is your area, Nora, and, and we have paid attention to, you know, the work of Decky and Ryan. Um, we, we've leaned on people um, that you'll be more familiar with than me, like Martella and, uh, and Steger, those kinds of people. We've read in the, in, in we've read some uh, psychology work and we've also read some philosophy um, based work. But in our work, I think we're we're happy to hang our hats on on pedagogy as our area. So I guess we're pedagogues. Our, our focus is very much on the application, the doing, the how to. So in terms of theory, um, we lean a lot on social constructivism. Um, so that's that's people like Bruner and Vygotsky, and and in PE people like uh, Mikael Kinnerstedt. Um, and in the USA, Catherine Ennis would have written quite a lot about its application. And when we started exploring this idea of meaningfulness further, of course, we discovered that we were not the first people to think of this. Um, and specifically in a physical education context, there were some scholars in the USA in the 1970s, um, Jewett, Bain, Mullet, Mullen, um, who developed a, an approach around the concept of personal meaning. Um, so again, their theoretical foundations were, were slightly different in that they, they went to kind of a socio-ecological route, but similarly, meaningfulness was the, the center, center core of their approach. So we were lucky enough to be able to look at what they had done previously um, and maybe try and get an understanding of why what they had developed had not um, become embedded as an approach and, and why it hadn't been adopted more widely in, in, in developing what we were working on. Yeah, I think, uh, and I think our point of departure from what they were doing is that we had heard from other people who were more familiar with, it's called the... Uh, personal process curriculum framework, PPCF, uh, that Jewett and Bain sort of led. We'd heard from others who were more familiar with it that one of the reasons they felt it didn't take on was that teachers were finding it far too theoretical, far too dense, um, and then struggled in, in um, implementing it uh, in schools, making sense of it for their own work and in their own context and with their own students. And so we really tried to, I think, keep the teacher uh, in mind and front of centre when we were playing with some of the ideas like, is this accessible? Would most teachers be able to make sense of this? Would students be able to make sense of this? Because that's important too. Um, the students should be able to understand what it is the teacher's trying to help them understand. And so I think that's one of the things that we've, we've tried to keep in mind. And as Deirdre said, we're probably both pedagogues at heart. We recently tried to write a theoretical paper, which I think I'll speak for myself. It was the first time that I'd, I'd really tried to focus on that and, and struggled um, not be in making sense of the theory, but I guess it's, it's not my starting point. As Deirdre said before, the, the how-to seems to be my immediate priority. Um, the, writing the theory paper and working that a bit more has been incredibly helpful for us to be able to see the potential, some other possibilities, some limitations, but uh, perhaps not our starting point, which may may sort of come, be putting the cart before the horse in some ways, but uh, as we get to things now, I think we can say we're getting a more complete picture of what we've been able to do because we've had the teacher in mind and now we're starting to work back and forth with the theory and the practice uh, in sync a lot more. Mm -hmm. And uh, I very much look forward to reading your theoretical paper as well. Is it something in well, progress or in <laughs> is it published already? <laughs> it may be rejected yet, so uh, we, don't, well, we don't really know. Um, we'll just say it's in limbo land at the moment. Okay, but I I really appreciate the work that you are doing, kind of putting things into practice, because often when we talk about meaning and meaningfulness, it 
remains too much in the realm of philosophical thought in a, in a sense that uh, just like you said it should be accessible and and kind of uh, making a difference in in what is actually happening in schools so i i really appreciate that that striving that you have and and the practical element of your work i, I was just going to say one of the things that we've um found to be of great value in Kretschmar's work is that he is writing from a philosophical perspective, but we find his writing and his ideas readily accessible for us to be able to make sense of it. So his work has been very helpful in the way that it's been presented. Um, and he's also written quite a few papers. Um, I would say the main audience has been teachers. Uh, so even though he's writing from a very philosophical perspective, uh, Clearly, he has that end user in mind. So um, he's, his work has been very, very helpful to us in, in helping us make that connection. And just to add to that, um, I suppose when, and, and we've come up against this in our work, this kind of uh, question back to us of, is everyone not trying to do this? Is, you know, is, and there, I, I can't imagine that there is a teacher who would say, I'm not trying to create meaningful experiences for my students or I don't want them to have meaningful experiences. But I suppose the question then is when you push on the, well, how, do, how are you doing it? How are you prioritizing this? That things get muddy because it's seen as this um, elusive kind of, concept that yes I'm working towards it but there's nothing actually concrete that I can do to work towards it it's just out there somewhere whereas we're very much trying to look at what are the concrete actions so what can the teacher do to scaffold or support or facilitate these kinds of experiences for the children and definitely our work is showing evidence that there are concrete actions a teacher can take to prioritize uh, meaningfulness um, in the as a frame for their students' learning and, and experiences. I think what you said about meaningfulness as being a very elusive concept and something that comes kind of people are asking or sometimes reviewers are asking, like what is the difference between meaning and, uh, well, let's say motivation, intrinsic motivation would be probably one of those. And... Uh, like I, the first paper I published was on spirituality and running, and and the reviewer just said that he or she didn't see any difference between my spirituality thing and and intrinsic motivation. And uh, I had my own ways of answering to that. But what are your thoughts in terms of are we just promoting intrinsic motivation, or or is meaningful experience something different, and how do they overlap? Hmm, I'd love to have a, a nice theoretical <laughs> definition for you. Um, yes, they're different. Uh, for me, anyway, they're, they're different. Um, so for me, motivation is is related to an action. So it's it's like a, a trigger. And I'm sure all the psychologists might be offended by that, but, um, you know, the motivation is to do. Um, whereas with meaningfulness for me, um, it positions the, the action and everything related to the action around the action, the why of the action, the outcome of the action within a context of the individual's, um, own life and, and, and own, physical activity world, if I could call it that. So it's connected to, to lots of other things. So in terms of definition, we leaned on uh, Martella's work, you know, so um, there's a, a physical education researcher called Chen who used similar uh, kind of frame of that tripartite structural of meaningfulness, you know, around purpose um feelings of significance and coherence. So Chen used that in, in a, a slightly uh, a version of that in his work. So we leaned on that a little bit. We started off, I'm sure like you and lots of people, with meaning, different kinds of meaning, meaningful, and how is meaningful different to meanings? 
Um, and in that, we definitely leaned back to Kretschmar because he writes quite a lot about that uh, from a philosophical standpoint. But we were also reading the psychology literature and I guess we synthesized and, and pulled through what was useful to us then in that kind of practical application um, of those ideas together. So I don't know if you want to add to that, Tim. No, thanks. <laughs> okay. I, I, if I had a, an hour, I'd, I'd uh, write it down and have it nice and succinct uh, for you next time. I'll have it ready. Yeah, but I think these are the questions that we are all grappling with and, and uh, we don't have a very solid literature based on, based on meaningfulness of physical education or meaningfulness of the sport. So I think that's kind of the work that we have to do. And, and what you said about Martella's work and, and when we add the coherence, that kind of brings this narrative perspective into it, that it kind of fits into the bigger story of your life and it fits to the bigger perspective of your life. So it's not uh, kind of just having good time or enjoyment. Like obviously intrinsic motivation is other things than that, but it's mm. kind of what I'm... I'm just thinking about and in my own work, like some of the uh, movement experiences such as fell running or, I mean, many movement experiences are not just pleasurable all the time. You might be exhausted and, and kind of uh, having, being wet and cold and, and, and all these things. Just thinking about fell running because I'm in Norway at the moment and I was running in uh in the rain in the weekend and still having like a meaningful experience. So uh, things that are not just pleasant might be meaningful at the same time. And mm. I, I think to me that uh, it, the, the individuality of meaningfulness is, is so important because, yeah, the, the challenge, the perseverance of those types of experiences that you're describing um, might be what I would say, oh, I could see how... Um, you might be making that experience meaningful, but you might be saying, actually, this is very fun or I like the people that... Uh, so we have some ideas about based on what we find meaningful in, in movement to help us understand or get a sense of it. But when we actually talk to the people who are engaged in the experience, it might be something very different. So the individuality, um, we get an... We can have an idea of what people are finding meaningful, but... We don't really know unless we, we ask them and talk to them. So um, it, it's interesting to hear your description of fell running and how you find that meaningful. I could sort of think to myself based on other things what you might be seeing as pleasurable or whatever in that experience. But uh, unless I really talk to you, I'm not sure what it could be. It could be something very, very different that's driving you. I think that's a really important point that we should never project our own movement experience is to kind of uh, think that that's the way that other people also find meaning. And especially I'm interested in kind of when you are doing this for physical education context and we are thinking about children and young people and they have a different life world than we have as researchers. So uh, maybe that's actually a nice thing to move towards. So if you, if you look at children's and young people's meaningful experiences in uh, physical education, what would be the things that uh, come up? What have you found so far? Um, we ha we're very lucky to be working with a very good PhD student uh, here, and we have been working with Stephanie Benny for, um, I think, the last four or five years uh, on the project. She led a literature review where we looked back to 1987 um, and we picked that year because that seemed to be the last real uh, publication of that, the PPCF framework that we were talking about before. And we looked to see what children and young people in physical education and youth sport experiences had described as contributing to the meaningfulness of an experience. So they had to be quite, the researchers had to be quite explicit in seeking that from uh, young participants. And while we keep the idea of individuality in mind, we were able to find some threads that 
young people tended to describe or words um, that tended to describe or capture an experience and how it was meaningful to them. And they tended to be in no order. There's some level of positive social interaction. There's an appropriate level of challenge. It's fun, uh, bearing in mind that they tended to use another descriptor to explain why it was fun, and that tended to be because I was with my friends or because I found it challenging or et cetera, et cetera. They were able to develop some motor competence, so they could have become very good at something or they liked trying something new. Uh, They liked feeling good at something. Um, and then also that they found their experience uh, in physical education to be relevant to their lives outside of school. So it had some application uh, outside of school or sorry, or inside of school. It could be that they functioned better in their other classes or what have you. In, we describe those as features of meaningful experiences, but we're quite cautious in saying that we shouldn't think of those as an end point, as a an all-encompassing range of features to describe meaningfulness. So we think that there could be other things like creativity, self-expression. For some, it's going to be competition. For others, not so much. Uh, But they have provided a good basis and starting point to help give us an idea of what people tend to find as meaningful. But... Again, we're using that as a starting point for the conversation to be able to say, are there other things that you might use to describe your experience? So um, that that's tended to be what, well, that's been a really helpful starting point for us. Yeah, it sounds like a very good idea to do a review first to see what is out there. Thanks for joining us this week on Physical Activity Research Through Podcast. If you like the show, make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing or following the show on Twitter. This podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Thank you for your support. If you found value in the show, we would really appreciate a rating on Apple Podcasts or whichever app you use. Or if you would, in a real old school way, simply tell a friend about the show. It would be a great help for us. We have a fantastic lineup of guests for forthcoming episodes, so be sure to tune in. Thank you all for your support and have a great day.